Hey everybody, and welcome to Twin Talk, a video discussion show where twin brothers Chris and Kevin drink and draw while talking about comic books, movies, and all things pop culture. We're your hosts, Chris Hart. Kevin Hart. And today we're going to be talking about Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Stick around to the end of the episode to see how our drawing of Carnage came out. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel for more content. I really thought that after One Room in 84, we didn't have to do this. Bottles back out. <laughs> we outside! <laughs> we got the boys in here. We got the bottle here tonight. We're going to have fun with this one. We got a live audience. We're doing like our own version of the Jimmy Fallon Late Late Show. <laughs> how about another joke, Kevin? What do you get when you go see Venom? Let there be Carnage in theaters at full price. <laughs> you get what you deserve! <laughs> Some people drink to remember. I definitely drink to forget this movie. <laughs> um, we were even gonna like do like a live execution. After. <laughs> it would have been more interesting than the actual film. Uh, we also showed up late to this movie, thinking that AMC Lowe's was gonna play their 50 minutes of trailers, which of course today's the day. The heavens <laughs> align, and they don't. They only played two trailers. I missed a, a few scenes, I guess, because when I walked in, I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on. We Turns were... out, didn't even need those first 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because this movie is trash, cut. <laughs> I can't believe this movie was delayed and pushed back so long. So they were really, de they would delay it and delay it just so it would come out in theaters to get that money. They could have released this thing overnight, like leaked this thing. Nobody would have cared. Mm -hmm. We would have forgotten about it in T minus one day, just like I am right now. Of all the movies to like stream at the same time, this was, this the, was one. the one. Absolutely. And I mean, honestly, half the movie was already like a week prior to the movie being released. YouTube showed like eight clips. They showed all the good stuff. Yeah, they yeah. showed all the good parts the of this PS5 movie. The PS5 exclusive with Carnage <laughs> coming out. <laughs> the Fortnite, the the Fortnite add-on, the DLC. Speaking of Fortnite add-ons, you said Venom with the party get-up was yeah. only in the movie to like for salesmanship. To push those Funko Pops. Yeah, you it was know, a cool look. I'm not yeah. going to lie. That Very Funko cool Pop's going to look dope. For Andy Serkis being the director of this movie, I really think that was a publicity stunt <laughs> because there's no way this man directed this. <laughs> the editor took control of this thing. He was like, yo, let me quarterback this thing. <laughs> yep. This cannot be his directorial debut. Like I expected so much more from him, and especially being the VFX master that he is, for the real. motion capture. Like you would think that he would do even more with the symbiote stuff. You would think he it's would just be more of the same from the first. He film. would be in the motion cap, teaching them the tricks of the trade. You know, this guy has been in so many elevate the film. Yeah, yeah. believable masterpieces. Honestly, with VFX, stick to making monkey movies. Dude. <laughs> Overall thoughts: CGI still eh. Carnage, hell yes. He was the best, best part, part of this of movie. movie. Yes, Everything definitely. about Carnage worked for me. Woody Harrelson was was choice. He was definitely the way to go. I'm so glad they got rid of that crap wig that was from the Ditch first. Just a wig, dude. Yeah, yeah the first God. end credit scene. His hair. I love how his hair changes immediately from like coming out of jail to like now he's all of a sudden he's a pimp. He's a player yeah. in the streets. He got laced. Hair. He got laced up. Though. He, got, like, yeah. he looked pretty pretty uh, fleek, dude. I did like the symbiotic relationship. Still, that's the best part of these films is the relationship between Venom and Eddie. A lot of fun. Uh, and obviously we're going to talk about the end credit scene. We have to talk about that. Just, Major moves being made right yeah, there. Yeah, inevitable because Sony needs more money apparently. <laughs> Amy Pascal's doing interviews high on coke. She's like, <laughs> she's not even hiding the coke rock anymore. She's like, yep, yep. She's it just goes counting on the, the money. Avi Arad is just like, yeah, we wanted to make a quality film that made us even more money. And it's just like, that guy, If I wish, God, I wish COVID got him. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Tom Hardy kind of sticks with the same old gag of, you know, Venom playing the sick, you know, loser. He did sound noticeably more like Bane, though, throughout this yeah. film. But speaking of the mic drop Venom when he's, like, in the crowd, I could have swore he'd be like, and who could detonate this bomb? Only you. <laughs> like, yeah. just break the dude's neck. But, I mean, like, we, perhaps <laughs> he's wondering what someone would shoot him at. <laughs> yeah. Before Crash, I play. But instead of getting any of that, you know, cinematic masterpiece, we get a girl in the crowd who's like, I love you! <laughs> Venom was sick of eating chickens. He's, you know, he wants to go full cannibal. And yet at the party, he's, he's basically just like being like this uh, vengeful lover, right? That living well is the best revenge. And he's just like getting drunk, getting wasted, and basically sleeping around Other as, a, as a symbiote. Yeah. 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 But he wasn't eating anybody. Like I love when that drunk came into Mrs. Chen's shop, threw up, and was just like, chocolate like, food. That was great. I've been there, man. I know. <laughs> Coming off the bender. <laughs> we really thought he was going to grab that mic and start spitting like the Eminem venom. <laughs> like, that would have been so meta. <laughs> yeah. Would have been so self-aware, definitely. Yeah. And this, this, I mean, this movie couldn't get any worse. I actually would have loved that. So <laughs> the apartment. Who's cleaning that up? Especially when Venom's like making the breakfast and stuff. <laughs> which uh, did not look good at all. <laughs> just, like, just throwing things together to feed him. And I I was actually laughing because it was a pretty funny scene how he was trying to like 
help Eddie feel better about the breakup or, or the uh, Anne Anne. getting yeah. married to this other man, which Dan makes a comeback. Dan and, and Anne, he, baby. <laughs> he, he's the hero of this movie, the comeback uh, kid right there. Shows up with a Molotov cocktail <laughs> and lights up Carnage at the end. Thank God he was there because without him, the climax, they would, everybody would be dead. Although she's got the hots for Venom. I don't know if it's for Eddie because at the end of this movie when Venom becomes like the savior and the hero, she's like, for, again church scene another tease she's holding on venom's letting her go down like a hero i could have swore that like half his face would come out and be like eddie and like an actual like dramatic like a scene, touching like moment, you know like yeah. i i love you you don't belong with dan but it was just v venom with his like six foot tongue I, yeah baby i got you <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I already been inside you. Let's keep this thing going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we get she venom again in this movie very briefly. It's a nighttime scene, so we don't get to see dat ass this time. Because <laughs> uh, in the first film, she had an ass that don't quit. So <laughs> for that reason, this movie loses another notch. <laughs> and I wonder if they're gonna set it up in the in the next film because obviously. Whether we like it or not, a third one's coming. You know? <laughs> it's on its way. I wonder if they're gonna set up where like she also gets part of the symbiote too, and they like fight crime together, or I don't know. Because she seems to really enjoy it. The uh, dynamics between Eddie and Venom in this movie, like I kind of now that I know what the first movie is, I kind of buy into their whole like buddy cop comedic thing. beats. Yeah. yeah, like it's not what I want. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. I gotta go there and watch it. But uh, for what it is, I thought like this time we would see him being the lethal protector, being more of a badass, mm -hmm. especially since they say lethal protector like 18 times in this film. I was expecting to see him like take on that role of where maybe Eddie lets him kill bad guys. I would rather see that movie than what we got. I'd rather yeah. see Eddie like letting him like kill bad guys, keeping the streets clean so that the when Dexter, Carnage- The Dexter. Yeah, 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 so that when Carnage comes that you're rooting for him, you, you got his back, you're like, okay, like, Venom's the good guy, even though like I still want to see evil Venom, and we're gonna talk about that post credit scene. I guess we'll jump into it now. Go ahead, yeah. We see that Tom Holland Spider Man on the TV with this multiverse shattering thing, and he like licks the TV and stuff. So I'm like, are they gonna set him up as a villain? Because like the way that he is now, that was weird. Yeah, that was yeah, weird. Like, Obviously, it was so forced. And why did he like? Why did he lick the TV? Like, is there an attraction there with the power? Like. None of it makes sense because it hasn't earned it, first of all. Yeah. And They're just like Spider-Man and Venom. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, like, why did he lick the screen? Does he know Does Although, he know him from another multiverse? Right like, before he was saying that, like, that was the cool aspect. I, did, I do want to see that because I do like the symbiotes way more than humans. It's not a, not a hard task at all. But, uh, like, he was talking about their planet. The 80, top you off. 80, yeah, keep going. <laughs> 80, 80 million years of, like, universal knowledge he's got. And I would have loved to... This I was what like, the directors did the whole time filmmaking, <laughs> by the way. I would have loved to see that. Like, I was actually intrigued by that. And then it's just, like, a wave of energy comes out. And I was like, oh, what's going on here? I thought we were going to get, like, a flashback to the to the Clintar, but he says, like, what'd you say? It was Mamma Mia? <laughs> was his, was his uh, whole Ming, Ma, Ming Ma, Ming Ma. Ming Ma. <laughs> Great chicken wings down the, the, the joint down on 112. <laughs> Ming Ma. But like, and then instead it's just this forced thing. Like immediately I saw, I was like, that's J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson on the TV. We're not that even trying cool. to hide it. Like it was that, cool, yeah. yes. But obviously like Tom Hardy with the No Way Home hat. Tom Holland saying like, can't wait to see Venom. Is that end credit scene? Like obviously like they kind of like hinted towards it. Maybe it helped the box office. Maybe that's why people are even flocking to see this movie. Tom Holland's going to be pissed once his Marvel contract ends with Disney. And he's going to have to be like exclusively Sony. And they're gonna be like, you know, get a gun behind him, get up there, smile. smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eminem comes back for this movie because the first movie made eight hundred million. None of that went to our local theater. First of all, we had to like to wipe my own ass. I had to go to like Dollar Tree next door, and then so none of it went to the local theater. None of it went to the VFX in this movie. Um, exactly. it, you know where it went to the Cayman Islands. Andy Serkis, <laughs> <laughs> his vacation with his family. Yeah. This movie has a budget of one hundred ten million. None of it went to gra like the graphics. Like the filters. Four years have passed. The it filters you see better. on Instagram and TikTok of like the lethal protector hashtag that you could become Venom on your Android or iOS. Those actually look better and more believable than the effects that we get in the movie. Going into this, I was obviously with very low expectations. This is like the 90s films that are trying to figure out what would make a superhero franchise successful. Mm -hmm. And that is not acceptable in 2021. Compared to the first movie, I prefer this one obviously because the villain is more of a threat. It's more of a wild time. It's fun. It's wacky. And Woody Harrelson is just hamming it up. He did a great job, honestly. For what it is, it's very cartoony. And he was a great, he's great in that role. I love it. Plot-wise, it doesn't make sense. Because at the end of the first movie, we got the end credit scene with the horrible mm -hmm. wig, right? Terrible wig. And he's already in prison. Mm -hmm. And then in this movie, he's like blaming Eddie Brock of that, oh, you sent me here to live out my days. I want the same thing for you. He didn't send him there. He was already there. He was already there. Yeah, so like... 
Did we miss something? Please let us know in the comments. We missed. The Are first, we crazy? We guys? missed maybe the first five, ten minutes of this movie. Uh, we were the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he hate Eddie? Because like he just exposed where the bodies were. It's like, dude, you put yourself in prison. I get you're crazy and stuff, but like, and then and then at the end he says he wants to be Eddie's friend. It's like. Who wrote this movie? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. Tom Hardy had a hand in it, which yep. brings yep. him down a lot. I think I really hope after this franchise, he can go back to making actual films because he was doing really quality films for a mm -hmm. while. Stick with Chris Nolan, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, and now he's just getting the paycheck. I would there love were to see a lot that. of cool fight sequences though in this movie. Mm -hmm. Every sequence with the symbiotes again and the CGI as poorly as it looks. Carnage looks. I had fun. With. Carnage looks good in this movie though. Like that, there, was a, there was a lot of shots in this film mm -hmm. that like I appreciated. It felt very like xenomorphy to me. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. Very of, alien. Of yeah. um of carnage shots, where, like when he goes to bite the heads off things. It's that one shot where he's got the security guard, and he's like shoving his, he's like tonguing him. You know, he's playing tonsil hockey with tongue game. Is, <laughs> tongue game is OG on that one. <laughs> yeah. And then like uh, the dude had a family, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he plays for team. Now he plays for team carnage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the when he's like killing him, that shot, it like I believe that like it looks so good that I was like, okay, like he's there. I I could feel that like. Whereas the rest of the movie, I'm like, that's CGI. It doesn't look good, you know? Especially the Wraith Venom thing that comes out. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> it's so it's so poorly yeah. designed. That, that was one of the coolest sequences was the jailbreak sequence, right? Of Carnage's mm. origin. He bites the blood. He's like, I've tasted blood. And he's like acting all zany. And that sequence of like him in the dark, you're waiting for the reveal and his mm -hmm. hands grab the thing. Very cool. Very like horror-esque. And I feel like that's where a this- well-directed scene. Very yeah. well-directed. And the IMAX too, the, how loud it was with mm -hmm. the Carnage's voice and everything was great. I felt like this movie definitely could have benefited from being a little bit more edgier and darker with an R rating. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's the thing is like it doesn't some, know what its audience some is. Some franchises just make it like like for instance like uh, Birds of Prey, rated R because we're edgy and females. You killed your audience. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie out in February, like February fifteenth, the movie came out. That movie was doomed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, and, and they even Birds of Prey even tried changing the title of the movie to like and the Emancipation of the yeah, de Declaration of Independence. Changing the title of the movie does not make your film better. If it's trash, it's trash, my dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but this movie though, like this movie could benefit from being an R-rated horror film with these symbiotes. Like even when um, at the end, when Venom like decides to bite off Carnage's head. I want blood, dude. <laughs> it's consistently inconsistent. Yes. And that's the only thing I could say about this franchise. I had more fun with this movie, but I still, it's not what I want. Kill it with fire and sound, dude. <laughs> this movie was just so random. There's so many random ass things in this. Like even like Cletus Cassidy's letter to, to Eddie Brock. Uh, Tim Burton shows up and does a Frank and Weenie animation mid <laughs> mid film. I was just like, "What am I watching right now? Like, uh, is this for real?" You got the animation from like the gorillas uh, feel yes. good. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was expecting to be like, "When the wind feel good." Mm. Some of this movie just makes zero sense, especially Story to me. Wise. Carnage and Scream or Shriek, whatever they call Shriek. it. Shriek. I thought it was Scream because I know her from the cartoons. Yeah, I know her from the Carter Part Three. She was great on that album. <laughs> <laughs> She looks like Lil Wayne on even more methamphetamine. <laughs> yeah. But I, I thought it was Scream from the uh, the Spider Man ride in yeah. Disney, Florida's Apparently Disney it's not. World. Yeah. And it was Shriek, apparently a character from X Men. Full disclaimer: I don't know much about the symbiotes. Like even uh, what's his name, Toxin, at the end of this movie. My or... knowledge stops and starts with Venom and Carnage. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's all I really need to know. Scream is cool. And cool then they look. dragged it. They were dragging it with extra symbiotes and stuff. They were just, just counting the money. Because she was a weird character. She lost her eye. Uh, Very stylistic for a lost eye, though, because in reality, if you get shot in the eye, bloodbath. <laughs> she has like a nice little like little gang sign on it. Yeah. There's a little purple tinge to it. That was one sequence that I liked was the whole jailbreak with uh, Carnage and also him coming to get his lover. Mm -hmm. the, the poor like psychiatrist that like basically their version of Arkham Asylum, right? Ravencroft. Mm -hmm. Ravencroft, or, yeah. But yeah. uh, even then, like X Men references, like oh. St. Estes, the school for unwanted children. I was like, okay, I see, I see, I see. Well, when he's breaking Shriek out of uh, jail, that was so funny how they played it, well directed, of like a love letter. They're looking at each other like, baby, it's been so long. And the, and the psychiatrist is like, <laughs> her feet are dangling. You know? She's like she's gasping. praying to God that her family, like, you know, like says one more, uh, I love you to her. Exactly. She's wondering what's the last thing she said to her family. That was a really cool sequence. Even when 
he like comes up to like the cage where I liked the whole containment cell. That was cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool how like he almost like hugs her. And then they start breaks it with out. the tendrils. They start making out. Very cool. She was like, oh, very hot. She, yeah. She was <laughs> she was like creaming over that. And that's what was so weird. At the end of this movie, she just goes full 180, and she's like, no, it's too much. It's yeah. too much. All the police officers that will never see their families ever again. <laughs> and when he takes Anne at the end, Carnage, she's like, Carnage, no, and he just like shuts her up because they were like unsymbiotic, which was cool. I, I liked. I was a little confused because, like, Carnage. Obviously, they were like they didn't. They weren't a perfect match. That was like the plot point, was that Eddie and Venom could rise above because they were a better match than Cletus and Carnage. But at the same time, like, they their agenda was working together. So all of a sudden, he kind of turns on him and is like, "Yo, shut her mouth." Because yeah. she has like this mutant ability to scream. Which, again, we missed the first five minutes. Someone please explain where she got these powers from. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's no explanation at all besides, like, okay, she's the only one in apparently the entire state of California that is a super-powered person. <laughs> yeah. she, okay, we get it. She's an orphan. But the screaming thing, though, left field, man. Where'd that come from? Let's talk about the logistics of the symbiote and the humans, right? As Carnage is breaking out of jail, the cops are shooting at him. His stomach opens up, and it's just like yeah. a giant O. And where the does he go? Through. Where is Cletus Castle? <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, please, someone explain the to physics. me. I mean, the physics of the symbiotes always, like, blew my mind. Again, where's the tongue, how they're breathing, yeah. how they're eating, digesting, blah, blah, blah. I, mean, I get it. It's comic books, cartoons. But even then, it's like, like, when when he goes, when they're shooting at him, is, like, Cletus Cassie, like, on the left rib cage. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then the bullets go past him and he comes back. Like, it's just so bizarre. Or is he, or is he open, too, like that? Oh, uh, we, for, heals him. we completely forgot to talk about the tornado that Carnage goes. Oh, my God. Yeah, the, Apparently, this new power developed by the directors for plot points. Carnage can make windstorms if he spins fast enough. And He's a Tasmanian so devil. <laughs> so unnecessary because he could have just killed the warden the same way. Said the same, I like the line, mm -hmm. any last words. That was cool. Could have worked any other way. Where did this windstorm come from? Final grade out of 10, what would you give this thing, man? Uh, you go first. Let's see. Let's see. I'm be generous. I gave the first one a 7. I like this one a little bit more. 7.5. Wow. Yeah, I'm giving this 2.5, man. <laughs> I'm, walking, I'm walking out of here. 2.5 because it exists. They got it made. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's out. You did it. Now that I'm sauced, I kind of want to go back to the theater and be like, <laughs> <laughs> Tell the little kids, like, you know, don't waste your time. Become a president or something. Do something. Become, a, become an astronaut. Productive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Le read a book in those two hours. It, the, the movie's not even two hours, so... This review is probably longer than the entire yeah, runtime. Yeah. We put more effort. We're sauce. We put more effort into this, <laughs> this review than the actual filmmakers did. So, yeah. Andy Circus was on set counting the bills. He was like, yo, big bills. <laughs> Hold up. Who's calling? It's a money calling. I'll call you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Although, when the movie ended, I was like, oh, I want to like this movie because the credits, Absolutely, credits yeah. came in. Another banger by Eminem and company. When that song came on, I was like the Wakandans, like, repping it out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I was like, yo, another bottle. <laughs> Song's a bop, dude. Better than the entire film. Obviously, Sony's like, they have the record label. They're like, forget the film, forget the entertainment business. They were like, yo, we got to push these artists that are on a record label. Yeah, so the budget was 110 mil. The first movie made 800 mil. Half the budget went to M. <laughs> Marshall Mathers Incorporated. Nothing went to the CGI. The same way I felt about the Into the Spider-Verse when like the music and the end credits come up. How I felt then is how I want to feel now. But there's same nothing company. there. Yeah, same company. Crazy. Nothing. There's no substance. There's nothing there. They literally just made this movie to make money. It's a piece of garbage. It's mildly entertaining. That's it. There's <laughs> there's nothing there. There really isn't. Here's what you do. Ready? So when the when the Blu-ray comes out of the 4K, whatever you're into these days, physical media is dying. <laughs> uh, when you get it, here's what you do. You wipe your ass with it, right? <laughs> or you set fire to it. You get a little heat for 10 minutes. That's more use than you're going to get from actually watching the film. So do yourself a favor. Burn this thing. Kill it with fire and sound, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that about wraps up today's episode of Twin Talk. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment below to join the discussion. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. We'll see you next time. Peace!